Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. My name is Mithun. And in today's video, I'll be talking about a tool which is called as Orange. Orange is a very, very powerful machine learning tool. It also helps you visualize very, very complex data. They have uh, very useful features uh, which uh, can be uh, availed when you're building any machine learning model. Many times what happens is that uh, people find programming very hard. Let's be honest about it. Some of us love programming, but not all of us uh, may want to spend uh, three or four hours just coding. And when we use uh, tools like Python or R, you probably have seen how difficult it is to write codes. And if you miss out on one bracket or uh, if, uh, there is a, uh, if there is a spelling mistake, you will get half a page error. And to debug that error, you might have to again spend another couple of hours uh, looking at what is a mistake that you have committed. So debugging and such things might not be everybody's cup of tea. We all uh, we all might not want to uh, spend a lot of time coding. So this is where, for non-programmers particularly, this tool Orange will be very, very helpful because using Orange, you don't have to write one single line of code. I repeat, you don't have to write one single line of code. If you're a non-programmer, even if you're a non-mathematician, you'll find this uh, tool delightful because uh, as I said, you can see a lot of icons to the left side. This is Orange by the way. And you can see a lot of icons. All that you need to do is click and uh, you can construct what is called as a workflow, which I will be showing. And by constructing this workflow, you will be able to build a lot of machine learning models in a span of uh, seconds, if not minutes. So it's very, very easy to use, very easy to pick up. So first thing first, in this video, I'll be talking about three things. How do you download Orange? It is freely available from the net. So it is a freeware. Second, uh, how do you sort of import the data? And thirdly, we'll be looking at a simple visualization using Orange. Going forward, I will be making a separate playlist for Orange, wherein I'll be showing some of the exciting features in Orange. Firstly, how do you download this particular software? Let me open up uh, Google for you. This is Google and I've just typed three words, Orange Software Download. And what happens is that the very first link that you get will take you to a page. And here you can see, download the latest version for Windows. And you have an orange button which says download orange 3.31.1. So this is the button that you need to click in case you want to download orange. I will anyway be pasting the link in the description window so that you can click on the link and quickly download Orange. So that is the first point. Let me come back to Orange software. Right. So as a matter of introduction, you can see here, this is a big blank canvas, but this big blank canvas is what we use to construct a machine learning workflow. And to the left side, you can see a lot of icons saying file, CSV file import, data sets, SQL table, aggregate columns, data info. And this is not the only thing. If I scroll down, you can see they have a lot of features for visualization, for modeling. You can see here tree, random forest, gradient boosting, support vector machine, logistic regression. They have a big collection for building models as well. You can evaluate your model. You can see here test and score. You can predict confusion metrics, ROC analysis, lift curve, calibration plot. All these are some of the features that we have. And finally, when I click on unsupervised, they give you a lot of methods for unsupervised learning, like distance metrics, T, stochastic neighborhood embedding method. This is another uh, TSLE method. Uh, that's what people uh, refer to uh, this particular uh, uh, this particular uh, algorithm. You can use T-SNE or even uh, the good old K-means and K uh, hierarchical clustering can be used. There are other options as well, but I'm not going into the depth of each of these things. Now, what I'll be doing here is to show you how you can get started with Orange, right? This is the first video, so I want to keep it very, very simple. How do we get started with, with building a workflow? For this, let me 
pick up a task. Let me open up Excel. So this is the Excel file that you can see here. It's a very simple data set, very famous data set, which is called as the Iris data set. So you have uh, flower ID. You have flower characteristics like sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. And you have which species of flower does uh, each record belong to. So for example, the first flower belongs to Setosa family. Second one again belongs to Setosa. Third one is again Setosa. You can see it's sepal length. The first flower, it has a sepal length of 5.1 centimeters. Sepal width is 3.5 centimeters. Petal length is 1.4 centimeter. Petal width is 0 0.2. What is the sample size in this data set? If I scroll down, you can see it has 150 as a sample size. The first record is obviously the variable label. So I'll have to exclude this. So the sample size is 150. So there are three flowers here, Iris, Virginica, Setosa, and Versicola. So what do I want to do? I want to import this particular file. So to import this file, let me come to Orange software. This is the blank canvas. You can see the very first icon. If I bring the cursor here, Orange gives a description which is pretty self-explanatory because Orange says, read data from an input file or network and send a data table to the output. And all that I need to do is click, just click on this file and you can see the file widget appears in the blank canvas. What do I do with this particular file widget? I'll have to open this. So either you can double click on this or you can right click and say open. It says use CSV import widget for advanced options for comma separated files. Okay, I got it. Now, you can see here source and you have two options here. One is file, wherein you can specify the path of the file. Or you can, uh, if you're uh, using a file from the net, you can specify the URL for that particular file. I'll click on this option, which is called as the browser. Simply go to desktop. Now here, there are a lot of files in my desktop. Uh, I will choose the option Iris and then say open. I've specified the file and you can see here ID, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and species. These are the files. These are the variables which will be imported. Iris helps us uh, by uh, guessing the variable names as well. For example, ID, is considered as numeric. Sepal length and sepal width, again, are considered as numeric. Petal length are also considered as numeric. And what we have is species. Species is considered as a categorical variable. I can close this. Now to display the contents of the file. If you want to display the contents of the file as a spreadsheet, what do you do? You can look at this particular icon in the left side, which is called as data table. Let me bring the cursor uh, on that particular icon. You can see here, it says data table helps us view the data set in a spreadsheet. Let me go ahead and click on this. The icon appears on the canvas at the right side. Let me establish a connection here. Very simple. You just need to make a connection between file widget and the data table widget. So to visualize this, right click and simply say open. Very simple, right click and then say open. You can see here to the left hand side, it gives you general information like there are 150 instances or 150 records. There is no missing data, six features. We have not specified any target variable. There are no meta attributes. Now you can see this is the data set that we saw in spreadsheet. ID, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, species. So we have imported the data set in orange. And you can see here, we are not typing any code. If you had to do the same thing in pandas, you uh, in Python, you had to uh, you know import pandas and then uh, you, uh, specify the function for reading a CSV file. All those things are there. But here's very, very simple is just point and click. So that's where uh, uh, Orange has a distinct advantage as compared to some of the other uh, tools because uh, we are saving a lot of time. We are not doing any coding at all here. We uh, don't have to keep any codes and such things in mind. We can just focus on the analysis 
and uh, by the time you import the file uh, in R or Python or Julia, they're all great tools, uh, no uh, offense to any of these uh, tools, but uh, sometimes it uh, takes a lot of time to build even the most simple models. Orange comes to our rescue because it's able to quickly do a lot of things and in a span of 15 minutes, you can build very, very complex uh, models. So fine. So you have an option here which says uh, visualize numeric variables. So the moment you click on this, it helps us visualize some of the numeric variables. So let me close this particular window. And once I close this particular file, the next option. Now, can I do some analysis on this? What I would like to do is uh, scroll down and choose the option visualize. There are many options for us to visualize. So I'll just choose the first option, which is called a scatter plot. In fact, it's the fifth option. Let me establish a connection here between data table and scatter plot. We can feed the data into the scatter plot. Let me double click. So you can see the option here. By default, we have x-axis being read as id and for the y-axis we have chosen sepal length in fact orange does this by itself i don't want this what i'll do is i'll choose sepal length and sepal width so this is the distribution of the points it's very useful but when we go to color we can color it based on the species of the flower now you can see here this is uh, quite fascinating because on the y-axis you can see sepal width and in the x-axis you can see sepal length. We have colored each of these data points based on the species of the flower. What do you see here? What we see here is mostly the blue circles are clustered in this region and when you look at some of these data points you have a combination of red and green and beyond seven, when the sepal length is seven, you see exclusively green color circles. You can look at the legend, the blue color circles uh, are for setosa. So it's very, very easy to separate setosa from versicolor and virginica. And in fact, uh, setosa flowers have smaller sepal length, but relatively higher sepal width. Now, when you look at the region, when sepal length is between five and seven, you can have a combination of red and green colored dots, implying you can have a combination of versicolor and virginica. So even if you're building a machine learning model, this exploratory data analysis is very, very useful because a machine learning model would definitely find it hard to classify versicolor flowers with that of virginica flowers. When you move beyond sepal length of seven centimeter, you see exclusively green color circles indicating that you can obtain some kind of a rule to separate virginica flowers. Now, this is a simple scatter plot uh, for uh, sepal width versus sepal length. Now, let me change this. And all that I need to do to change the variable says click on the drop down menu here and look at petal length and now petal width. This is even more interesting. Look at the way we are able to uh, segregate the different species of flowers. You see all the blue color dots closer to the origin and you can see all the red color dots uh, in the center and to the extreme right side, you can see all the green color dots. So it looks like petal width and petal length are able to differentiate the different colors a lot better than sepal characteristics. So from this, it is pretty obvious that petal length, which is less than two centimeter and petal width, which is less than 0.7 centimeters, when you look at this profile, it will always be setosa flowers. You don't see any blue color circle anywhere in uh, anywhere uh, to the extreme right side. So small petal length 
small petal width correspond to set of flowers. On the other hand, uh, when the petal length and the petal width is moderate, you see one set of colors which is versicolor. The third rule that you can pick up is when the petal length is extremely high, that is greater than 5.1, and let us say petal width is greater than 1.6, you only should be able to see green color circles, which means they all correspond to Iris virginica. So large petal length, large petal width correspond to virginica. At the other extreme, small petal length and small petal width correspond to uh, Setosa and moderate petal length, moderate petal width correspond to the flower versicolor. So this is a simple way in which we can sort of uh, do exploratory data analysis. Let me just close this. I am back to orange. So since this is an introductory video, I just wanted to tell about some of the benefits about orange. Firstly, it is a tool, it's a machine learning tool wherein you don't need to do a lot of uh, coding. It is just point and click. It has a lot of advantages because it saves a lot of time. It is freely available. And uh, thirdly, very, very uh, important, it has a lot of visualization techniques as well. So if you're a non-programmer, definitely you should try this. I will be pasting the link for Orange in the description. Please use the link to download uh, Orange. It is not hard. All that you need to do is click on the download button and follow simple steps. Click, keep clicking next three or four times. You should be able to download it in your local machine. So thank you very much for watching uh, this uh, video. I request you to hit the, I request you to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. Have a great day.